Hello and welcome to the first session of Fabula Ultima, aka how me and my gamer friends got reincarnated into Legendary Heroes. Uh, we're trying something out, a little bit of a video format uh, Eric has set up for us on the table. And we're going to be uh, adding something new to our uh, sessions and that we don't even do in our main podcast. So let's uh, go for some music. Um... This music is provided by Michael Gelfi. I'm probably butchering that name, but uh, pretty much he just creates great music for tabletop role playing, and uh, it's uh, free to use. And as long as we give him a shout out, a okay. So definitely check him out. We'll be posting links in the description. But anyway, to the players that I'm with, um, I have Eric. Hello, hello. I have Jim Bob at the far. Hello. I don't like that movement. Never do it again. <laughs> and then I have Pat. So, Sup. And of course, my name is Cameron. We are normally the host of the Arclight podcast. Um, there'll be links to that in the description as well. But today we're playing Fabula Ultima, a new tabletop RPG um, inspired by JRPGs and anime for the most part. If you've checked out the Session Zero, you've seen us building the world. Uh, which is henceforth only re referred to as the planet. And the main kingdoms or continents that are on the planet. And some of the world history. Um, I believe you can see some of that map on the camera. There it is. Uh, we forgot to add that in last time, but here it is. Um, anyways. Yeah, so if everyone is ready to go, I have a full text document to begin so hey yo pat yeah you got it what do i got <laughs> all right <Ligma. laughs> you all feel it the falling it goes on for what feels like ages all alone plummeting into the dark after several moments of dread a light appears. As you approach at a rapid pace, you can barely make out the circular shape that you're coming up to. And there isn't just one, at least two others. And you can see before you crash, or at least you thought you would crash, this glass pane is illuminated. And as you are looking down over it, Slowly, an image begins to spiral out from the core. Pat. You float there above the light, watching as this spreads. Soon, the image is fully realized. Before you is a stained glass image. A man with brightly lit crimson eyes. His armor chest piece is a dark metal, and it reminds you vaguely of what the Greek hoplites wore back in ancient normal human history. However, unlike the hoplites, the legs are armored with a dark plating, as are the arms, and the gloves come to a short point at the fingertips, like claws. Fur lines the collar of a thin cloak draped around one of his shoulders. While you're observing the armor, you see one of his hands gripping a hilt. And then you follow this image, and you see a blade that almost would look ordinary, besides deeply carved runes along the midsection. And then you hear it in your head. A voice that seems empty. I am a fallen knight, damned to be without a home. Will you change the fate of my people? Eric. You float there above the light, watching as it spreads. Soon the image is fully realized. Before you is a stained glass image. A elf. Or at least a human or with pointed ears. The skin is lightly tanned. And his features are sharp. The hair is auburn. And his eyes are hazel. Besides his ears, your eyes are then drawn to the staff that he has firmly in his grip. An excellent carved or even chiseled piece. A crystal-like formation nestled at the top. The robes he wears are soft green and black. Hit high fashion, you might even say. On the shoulder is some type of crest. It depicts a silver crown and scepter above a violet field. And then 
you hear a detached, cold voice, seemingly empty. My people were rooted in tradition, so I turned my back on them and left for a life worth living. Will you live up to what you and I have always wanted? James. <coughs> <laughs> Like the other two, you are floating above this light, watching as an image is spread on this, this glass pane. You see a hulking figure, gray skin tightly bound around large muscle. Gray. Almost looks like leather. An orc? You can assume so from the tusk protruding from the jaw. And he seems to be young, whatever that means. The eyes are a piercing blue, and there's a hood that covers the hair, but you see some rolling out of the side. It's jet black. His armor is simple leathers with the hooded cloak. Resting up on his chest is a bow and quiver. There are red splotches on his hands, and they seem to be dripping. Blood, perhaps? And then you hear another voice. Well, a voice. I thought I was using my gifts to collect coins, but in the end, all I was collecting was regrets. You won't be able to replace what I've stolen from this planet, but would you be able to make something from this darkness? One thing is common between these pictures. Their faces are shifting, slightly, their features becoming vaguely like your own. As you start to hover closer, Waves of energy pulse up and down you. Emotions swelling, anxiety peaking. All aspects of the human senses firing at once. Your hope, your ideals, even your memories from before begin to fade away. Everything you thought you once knew scattered like a far off dream. You're empty now. However, not for long. Slowly you feel it. Familiar parts of yourself are being put back. Key memories that make you who you are. The bonds that you share. But something, someone else is there. You all feel them. However, they're all locked behind some type of door. Where the key is, you don't know. And then you all hear this next phrase. A scattered dream that's like a far off memory. A far off memory that's like a scattered dream. I want to line the pieces up. Yours and ours. Then suddenly you're dropped onto the glass. Crashing through it into the darkness. All at once you get the same feeling. The feeling you get when you're dozing off. The weird in between moment where you're awake but not. After a couple seconds. To break off that. You begin to smell it. Mildew. Dank air. Ancient. It's unpleasant. And then, as you're sitting there in this mildewy space, you begin to hear it. The rushing of wind. Strong wind. Battling against whatever this room is that you find yourself in. And then, finally, when you almost shake off this haze, you hear something else, something closer. You hear the breathing of something else in this room with you. What would you all like to do? Um, what can we immediately see? You are in darkness. Okay. All you can hear is the... This... Exhaling, deep breaths, and you can hear the wind outside this chamber. Um, question, do we, can we, like, see each other? So you look around, mm -hmm. and you blink a couple times, and you do vaguely see two shapes in the room with you. Okay. Is the breathing coming from those other two shapes, or is it a th third source? As far as you can tell, there's nothing else in the room immediately making noise. 
I just like give out a hello. Hello. You immediately can recognize Pat's voice, and Pat, you immediately recognize Eric's voice. Eric? Pat. Where Where? are we? I was about to ask you the same thing. I cannot see anything. Dude, what's going on right now? Is there someone else here? No. Hey, yo, is that Jim Bob? Jim Bob? Hey, yo. (laughs) Jim Bob. That's me. But wait a second. This doesn't explain where we are. Just went on a bender. You know how it is? I I find that hard to believe because I don't think Harry's house gets this dark. That is true. Uh, I'd like to feel around, like, maybe, uh, can I find a wall? Yeah, you're able to, this is like the size of a bedroom, basically. Okay. Um, and you're able to find a wall. Is it, like, stone or is it, like, um, plaster? The floor what? is some type of, like, uh, smooth stone, mm-hmm. and as you're, you know, touching, feeling, uh, you do feel the wall to be also some type of like more cobble, just like foundational piece. Is it like bricked or is it like? No, this is like cobblestone. Okay. So nothing really bricked, but it does feel more like a wall. Uh, it doesn't feel like an inside of a cave. No, this feels like okay. a wall. Um, whatever that means. <laughs> I'll just. You guys, everyone spread out. Let's find an exit. I'm going to keep touching this wall, and I'm going to go clockwise. Okay. As you guys are going to begin to explore in this room, you start to think about where you are. You have no idea. And you actually can't even rem- remember what feels like anything. The only thing that you really know is that the three of you are friends, and that you've been friends for a long time. And that you have other friends. But really anything besides that, you can't recall. Guys, uh, any chance you guys remember what we were doing before this? Uh, I have no idea. I just woke up in pure darkness. Do we still remember that, like, vision we had? Uh, yeah. Each of you do remember, uh, it's, it's like, it feels like, a. Like a fever dream, basically. Like you're you're not sure if what you experienced really happened. Yeah, I just had the wildest like dream, right? Right, right. Okay. I've never dreamed about orcs, and I dreamed about an orc that had this like this edgy looking orc with a bow and quiver. Huh. I find it hard to believe you haven't dreamed of orcs before, Jim Bob. But but go on. Well, it is true. I've never dreamed about works before. Um, I don't know. It it felt like really real. Huh. Um, it's funny you say that because I dreamed about also an edgy man with a fur cloak, and was it you? No, but because I'm not an orc. I'm not. I don't. I don't, I don't know. He, he he looked cooler than me. Um, and he had a he had a really cool sword. Um. And then that's all I remember. And then he said something to me. It's fuzzy at the moment. Um, but then I just woke up and now I'm here. Yeah, uh, you know, now you guys mentioned this, I, th- I do think I remember so- having a dream recently, but I didn't think anything of it. I, I actually dreamed of some elf-looking dude. But, I mean, that's nothing new for me. I have fantasy dreams all the time. I, I... It's usually elf-looking women, though, right? How did you know? I always know. Fair enough. Okay. Anyways, uh, you guys find anything yet? Have, have we scanned this, these walls? Is there an exit yet? Um, Jim Bob, I say with you having touched up on the wall, uh, you are able to find something that feels like wood. Uh, and not the kind that you're hoping for. <laughs> no. Damn. I, I was going to make the joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it, you find like a wooden door. Okay. Is it like... A latch system is there hinges uh, i'm just gonna start pushing fuck it you give it like a good push yep it just kind of rocks a little bit huh. can i try you need help no i, I oh, okay <laughs> i go i go to like elbow check the door or shoulder check the door. okay it just is there any light 
and just slams up against the wooden, I mean the, um... Stone. Stone. Uh, no, there is no light, but from your eyes adjusting, you do see that it's actually a stairwell descending down. That it, it immediately opens up to this, like, like I don't know, small platform that then immediately goes into, like, a spir okay. like a spiral staircase down. I found a way. I won't say the way out, but it's out of this room. Sounds good enough for me right now. Um, Pat, go first. What do I gotta go first? Pat, go first. This is not me. I found the door. All right. I would. Wa I walk out the the door first, I guess. Okay. You step through, and. Yeah, that's about it. You step through. I mean, nothing. It's very. It's just. It feels like a normal staircase. <laughs> go down the stairs, Pat. Right. You're like being really bossy. Yeah. You, you know. go down the stairs. Okay. I go down the stairs. <laughs> okay, so he pa he brushes past. Fuck you. Rude. I stay behind, Pat. I touch now. your ass as I walk by. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Feels very firm. Ooh. <laughs> Tight. Look, almost. are we still in pitch black dark? Yes. I mean, your eyes are adjusting, but... Alright. As long as we're in the dark, no one touch my ass. It makes it way weirder. It's not weird in the light? Not as weird, because I don't know who it's where it's coming from. It was me. I keep walking. <laughs> I once can stay behind Pat, because uh, I have horrible night vision, so I will definitely, or at least, yeah, I have horrible night vision. You can see perfectly fine. Oh, can I? I mean, it's still dark, but you don't feel like you're at a disadvantage in the dark, in the, in the nighttime. Okay, okay. Most of the welcome change, but I'm still going to stay behind Pat, because, uh... If I'm tripping and falling, I need Pat to catch me. Alright, we moving. Yo, by the way, Pat. We should move. Yeah. You been working out? Your ass? <laughs> <laughs> I don't appreciate you looking at my ass. I'm just, I didn't... I wasn't looking, I, I felt it. <laughs> I was just commented, like... You been doing squats? What, like, nah. Honestly, no. So as you're going down, and this conversation is happening, all of you know this as well. There seems to be some type of lag with your movements. Oh. Like, you're like, I want to walk, and then there's like a s couple second delay, not even second, millisecond delay of like the body reacting, and it's almost like. In some of your cases, it's faster, it's slower, but it's Damn. definitely not like moving your body as you know it right now. Damn, I must be really hungover right now. <laughs> but one, then one hell of a party we went to, boys. <laughs> and then you're walking, and you reach what feels to be uh, like a like a landing. Okay. Like you've reached another floor. Okay. And you can clearly tell. You know how when you're in an empty room, like a dark empty room, you can kind of. You get a sense of the room, like, you're like, man, it's, like, really fucking dark in here, so the room's gonna be really big, or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you kind of get that sense, that you're in some type of circular, like, landing, and you can't see anything in the room, it's still dark, uh, but you're definitely on some type of, like, floor, and the staircase keeps going down. God damn, how long is these stairs? Where's the fucking light switch? <laughs> hey, yo, facts, dude. Uh, you reach the floor, uh, the next floor down. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Oh my god. Whose fucking house are we in right now? I don't know. I don't remember anybody having this many stairs. I'm gonna try and, like, r run down the stairs. Like, try and just get through the stairs as fast as possible. Okay. Because I'm like, alright, this is get. There has to be an end to this, so I'm trying to, like, get to the end. Okay. So you um, kind of pick up the pace going down the stairs. Yeah. You start to see some light. Um, from what you can tell, you went down three stories. And you see this door that has light coming, like just enough light to be, to like kind of shine underneath it, like it's peeking through. 
and um, I'm going to say you're in the front. And as you're uh, running towards the, <laughs> the door, uh, you, you kind of hear something on the other side. Guys, there might be something up here. I also see the light, so we're getting close. Okay, fucking finally, dude. Yeah. Maybe we should uh, proceed with... Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! Figure out whose house we're in. What the fuck is that? You guys hear that? No, what the fuck are you talking about? Okay, wait a second. All right, now, now I hear all right, it. All right. We need to chill. And, and then you... <laughs> And then, so that 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 continues. Like you just hear like this weird grunting, and, like in like muffled, like clearly not English being spoken, on the other side of this door, and you hear like the soft cackling of a fire, on the other side, and the wind is still like, like you're like it's like you're like in like a like a, what would be like a winter storm basically, is what it sounds like. Okay. Also, so, side note, I want to change the song, but I don't know what's going to come on because we're doing it live. So I don't I don't want to put something on that's like super combat heavy and then that not call for it. So tell you. So like, I would say we could knock on the door, but we're inside already. Yeah, it looks like we're inside <laughs> going outside. Oh, that's strange. I mean, I guess it makes sense, but. So I'm going to. Screw it. So, just gonna... listen, listen, listen. We just gotta act like we are. We should be here. Right? I mean, if that's how I act anywhere I go. Just puff out... Not me. Just puff out your chest. Mm-hmm. Pick so up wait, your chin. Wait, can I... Can I start to, like, see them now that we're closer to light? Like, what they look like? Or no? No, the door... Oh, yeah, them? it's, like, behind a door. Yeah. It's... You can clearly, you can see, like, when you get up to it, I'd say this. So when, you, when you're actually trying to not worry about what's on the other side of the door, you, you're in the front still. So you kind of see as you approach. And you guys haven't really been noticing it. You just thought it was, like, just general noise of you walking. You, like, kind of clank up to the door. Like, what sounds like armor. And, yeah. you, and you look down at your feet as you hit the, uh, like, the final bit, the final landing. And you... Look down at your boots, and you're, like, wearing, like, some edgy, like, pointed, dare I say, Dark Knight boots. What the hell? Where did, where did I get this drip? Damn, Pat, you're clanked up. And then, and then you guys look at him, and you can, you slow, you can't really see his face, or any, like, the upper torso is still mostly shrouded, but, like, Pat is wearing some, like, dope-ass, like, armored greaves, like... Oh. He's also looking really thin. So you have been hitting the gym. I was off. I'm going to look back at Jimbo and see him. Uh, You cannot see his orcish features, but you also clearly see that he is like... It's just enough light to tell that he's also like wearing some type of leather pants or clearly like archer. I don't know how to describe the kind of pants you'd be wearing, but it's very clearly something Jim Bob would not wear. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. And he's also looking a little bit thinner, a little bit more toned. Yeah, we're all uh, we're all looking pretty uh pretty tight right Eric's now. Eric's silhouette is literally just a cloak. Like you can't really oh, see, <laughs> like it's, 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 like the, the magic robe is just makes him look wider. Hmm. You gonna uh, open that door or not? I'm gonna open the door slowly. Oh yeah, I think we're supposed to be here. Just throw so, that shit open, dude. Yes, sir. Oh. All right, fine. I'll just rip it open. All right, so you just push the door open. Yep. Huh? You step in. Do you step in? Yeah. So, multiple things happen at once. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. The first thing I'd say you all immediately notice, uh, well, Jim Bob and Eric notice, uh, it's not Pat standing in front of you guys, at least from the back. This is like, this dude has anime spiky hair, and, and like mainly in the back. And he has this longer furred collar cloak on. And underneath that, you do see some type of metal armor. Like, and uh, attached to his hip is like a sword. Okay. And you, he's, he steps in. And you all see two small, uh, two, no, three, sorry. Three small creatures that 
you all three would immediately assume to be goblins. And they're like, <laughs> and they like draw their um, they draw their weapons, which is like these uh, little axes that they have, like little hatchets, and they uh, ready themselves. Goblins? What the, what the hell? Are we in, are we at Comic Con right now? Like where? You know what? You talk about what the hell about the goblins? First off, who the fuck are you? I look back. Yeah, who the fuck is this? <laughs> who the fuck are you? Was? Yeah, and then you clearly see an elven mage, if you had to guess. Right. With hair color like Eric's. And then you see just a fucking orc. Jamum, what the hell is wrong with your face? That vaguely looks like Jamum. I start touching my... Do I have tusks or tusk? Yeah, you have tusks. I, have tu I, feel, I start feeling my tusks. God damn, I'm going to need a lot of toothpaste. <laughs> Wait, what, what color are, what are you? Gray. 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 Oh, okay. I start looking down at my hands. Damn. Uh, so you 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 then hear the this the little sound of little feeties slapping on uh, cold stone as one of the goblins is rushing towards you, Pat. Right now. Oh fuck! He's uh, he's, fl he's flailing his axe. I I'm gonna try and pull out my sword. <laughs> okay, you almost reflex like you pull out the sword and you level it right at the goblin's throat almost like you yourself pat would you describe yourself as having sword training absolutely not <laughs> so this movement is done like someone with training and you're able to pretty much level the sword immediately to the goblin's throat uh stopping it dead in the tracks uh, but the other two do not stop and, be and ch uh, charge after you as well. So, I'm going to say we're going to roll a little bit of a gro group initiative. Oh, God. Um, which is, I believe initiative is on your guys' sheets. Well, we have our, modif yeah, our initiative modifiers. Yeah. Yeah, isn't it uh, individual? Uh, well, it can be done as a group or be done individually. Um, Y'all don't want my initiative. I have minus three. Yeah, uh, so typically the... I have the best of a zero, I think, right? Uh, I am negative two, so yeah. Alright, and I'm... So pulled. is it a d20? No, it's gonna be based off of the, the, um... The dexterity stat, I believe. A dexterity dice, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go first, Jimbo. I can't see. You got a nine. Nine with a initial modifier of zero. So nine. Big nine. That's probably the highest we'll get. Yeah, because my <laughs> dexterity is a, set, a d6, and I got minus you guys, two already. You, you guys are also going to be rolling, because uh, you're technically okay. supporting characters, uh, and you are you need to beat at least a 10. Well, definitely not doing that. Well, I got negative one for my initiative. And I got negative, also negative one. <laughs> oh, so as a group, we got seven. Right? No. No. So, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so basically, how it works is... Every the supporting characters when they pass a ten, they add plus one to the check. And you guys both failed, right? Very much so. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you didn't you wouldn't have hit the uh difficulty modifier, which was just their initiative order. So the goblins are actually gonna get to go first. Okay. Okay. Uh so basically Little go little Gobby is coming at you with this axe. Uh, and basically how so how conflict scenes are gonna work is um they're gonna have initiative first and then you guys all go and you pick which one goes first and then the goblins go again and then someone else that wasn't the last player goes so that so you the turn order is not like the turn order is set between groups but not players yeah so Eric can go first on your guys's turn this time he can't go again. But he, he doesn't always have to go first on, on the on the round. So you guys can change uh, when you go per round, basically. Okay. Okay. The initiative just sets the initial order of the groups. So they take turn combat. Yes. Time to cue up the battle music. Hopefully. <laughs> All right, well. If anyone else has their PDF open and actually wants to go to the conflict scenes, that will uh, help help you guys see anything in related to that. Okay, working on it. I'm gonna find something that sounds combat related. This sounds like it might do. <laughs> uh, 
Um. And okay. There we go. That's, that sounds oh, com that sounds combat. I'm gonna turn it up a little, little bit. This sounds like uh, starting level combat music. Now you have to learn your combos. My combo's ready. So... Oh, jeez. Basically, also how... So once you roll your accuracy, you're going to want to roll... You're pretty much rolling to hit the defense of the creature that you're attacking. Pretty yeah. soft, like any other... Uh, any other tabletop game, really. Um, I'm just trying to... Bring this up. Uh, page 58 is where that's at. Okay. So that way we don't... We can be educated within the first session as well. All right. There we go. Got it. Okay. So, for future reference, <laughs> initiative is dexterity and an and insight. And insight. So should we roll and It's that just again? the highest of those two rolls, right? No. Not added. No, it's them together. That so actually, what's we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna mulligan everything and do it by the book this time. So at the at the start of each conflict, player characters perform an initiative group check. This is a group check. This relies on dexterity and insight. So who is going to be the group leader for this check, Jim Bob? Yeah. All right. You got a fourteen. 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 Okay. And then would you guys also like to now roll? Sure. I'll yep. try. Because yeah. it, it, it is a group check. So. I got a 15 minus 2, so that's going to be 13. All right, so you pass. I got a 6. All right, so you fail. Each supporting character that su successfully performed the check will get a plus 1. So you're, what, was, is it 14? Yes, yeah, so it's, it's 15. It's 15. Um, you each share a bond, so it'd be plus 1 again. Okay. Okay, so now technically is when you would roll. But we are, you already rolled. Yeah. So it goes the supporting cast first and then the main roll? Yeah. They're okay. pretty much beefing up your roll. Okay. So uh, so you succeeded, so that means you've sh seized the initiative. Uh, so we're going to go into the round. So this is PC turn. Okay. Um, so any of you can act first. Who wants to go first? Uh... Is anyone else ready? I'm gonna have my weapon out at yeah, the guy, at the ready. goblin. Yeah, you're 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 staying there. You can go first. All right. I guess I'm gonna attempt to swing at this thing. Okay, so you're gonna make that accuracy rating. Plus my dex plus my might. And I take the two, one of the two, right? For damage. So you're gonna do your dex. Do, work oh, your right, dex right, might. Right. Okay, so. God damn it. That's my might. And now roll your dex as well. And my dex. To now total up. So that is 6 plus 1 would be 7 for the accuracy. Okay. So you rolled uh, 7. And their defense is. You said you rolled a seven? Yeah. Okay, you missed. Damn it. Fucking pain. I guess that works. Uh, so you go to swing, and uh, instinctively swing. Like, you're not really even telling your body to move. You're Where you have the, the, uh, the goblin, like, you have your blade level to it, the other goblin quickly comes down and knocks the sword away before you can even... Before you go in for this, like, plunging into the next strike. Uh, so that would be your guys' turn. Yep. Do I have my shield on me, or is that, like, a... Because I did get one. Yes. Okay. I wasn't sure <laughs> if, like, the situation <laughs> that we were in, I had one. Yeah, it would... We're, we're, we're say the shield is, like, on your back. Okay. So they're going to get to go. Well, one of them will. Uh, so the one that smacked away your blade jumps in front of the other one and like snarls and he's gonna go he's gonna go swing his little axe at you. Uh. 
Uh oh. Why the hell are we fighting goblins? What is going on? Yeah, what is the reaction to this right now? Uh Yeah, I agree with you about on that. Alright, so basically I rolled double tens. Oh no. It sucked, but I'm dying session one. <laughs> <laughs> so basically on, on when you succeed on anything that is a six up and it's doubles, it's a critical. Oh shit. So, so good thing I took a picture of that table. Um, so basically, when you hit, when you get a critical, you get an extra thing called an opportunity, mm -hmm. and you just kind of pick the one you want. Um, so this guy is going to not only hit you, he's also going to apply a uh, a status effect on you, and he's going to apply dazed on you. Get dazed on, nerd. Oh, damn. Damn. So uh, if you want to look up what that does. <laughs> uh, while I'm going through the rest of the combat turn. So he applies daze to you with this attack that's going to also do do damage. And so that the high roll on that is going to be 10. So, and he has a just a uh, what's your HP? 65. Okay, so he, his is a high roll plus 10 physical damage. So he deals 20 damage to you. Good Good forward. Also, uh, dazed means it reduces my insight die by one. All right. Oh, no. Uh, and that yeah. is going to be his go. Okay. So now uh, it's back to you guys. I'll take a go. Okay. So you, this this goblin essentially leaps in front of you and immediately slashes you and pretty much catches you off guard and um, pretty much just doesn't really do 20 HP, yeah, but it's not, it's just... You know, it's a little bit of a shh across your arm with, with this axe. I was like, oh, damn. Yeah. Is this little guy, and the other ones are getting riled up. Jim Bob? Um, so, I am going to. Um, I'm going to do barrage. Um, so you pull out the bow? Which means, yes, I pull out the bow. I. Use 10 mind points to cast Barrage. And Jim Bob, you yourself would say you have no bow skills, correct? Um, to the point of where you feel comfortable doing a, a Barrage? I'm going to be real. I, I've tried to shoot a bow before, and it went terribly. Okay, so this is pretty <laughs> remarkable seeing you immediately raise this bow and you're about to fire off a Barrage. Shoot. So what, so what is the... Uh, it gives me multi-two slash... Uh, it increases my... Um, the attacks multi property by one up to a max of three. So uh, I get two attacks pretty much. So you perform a single accuracy check and compare it to the defense of every target. Uh, from That's multi two? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, you're going to roll once and compare it to the uh, to each target. Uh, can I use a fabula point to re-roll that? Yeah, or are you, what are you invoking? Um, Pat's getting pulled up on... Uh, I'm doing my bond. Okay. My friend! That's much better. Um, so I got n uh, a total of 19. So I believe five good points you guys are starting at three, so drop that down to two. But remember, someone keep track of how many you spend because the amount of five points you spend equal XP at the end of the session. Okay, so... Yep. So, like, um... Do we each have three fabulous points? Yes. Okay. You probably have more, but honestly, we, we didn't we didn't write it down, so. <laughs> right. Um, so that's a 19 to hit. Oh, that definitely hits. That hits both. Um, a 19? What did you roll? I got two nines, and I get a plus one. Two nines? So you critted. Yep. Which would be auto success. I see. Nice. Okay. Um, so what is a... How do you crit exactly? Rolling doubles. Okay, Matching doubles. doubles. Okay, double. Matching doubles. Okay. So like two nines is a crit, crit. So that means you get to use an opportunity, as well. Um, I'll do. Can I pick any of the four? Slow days, weak or shaken. No, opportunity can be anything. I mean, not anything. Opportunity has its own uh, list, basically. Um, so you can either do an advantage, something like something that gives you an advantage, which is a plus four to an, uh, an ally, uh, you or an ally. 
Uh, you can apply an affliction. Uh, you can create a bond towards someone or something, um, or add an emotion to one of your existing bonds. Um, you can choose a there's a favor. You can get information. You can scan, discover one vulnerability or one trait. Um, I'll do the Unmasked. thing that gives a plus four to accuracy for Pat. The next, so the next check performed by Pat will receive a plus four bonus. Yes. Okay. And um, you also roll the high roll. So what's the high roll? So nine plus eight for 17. 17 damage to each one? Yes. And if someone, um, while well, I'm writing this down, if you want to look up Babylon points uh, for further clarification. They're about to say, yeah. Um. Anyway, um, you said 17 damage? Yes. All right, so you got them. So you... Uh, and that'd be the two that are, like, right yeah. in front of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so just, just to clarify, distance doesn't really, like, there's no movement. What it right. comes down to is what do you want to do and who's going to get in your way. It's okay. basically so... Um, Jim Bob slams up against the wall, fires off these two quick arrow shots into these two goblins, <laughs> and they both take it, and um, they start to squeal like pigs, basically. <laughs> uh... It definitely hurt. Um, and you take a moment, Jim Bob, and you're like, holy shit. I'm just like... I'm cracked. <laughs> <boat."> <laughs> holy shit, I'm cracked. Uh, holy shit. So now it's back to them. Um, let's see here. Uh, it is... You. We do all start with three fabulous points. So it goes one of us, enemy, one of us, enemy? Yep. Okay. Well, it's actually, um, so since, yeah, that's that's how it goes right now since there's an even amount. But if there's ever more enemies than there is players, the extra enemy turns get tacked on. Okay. So this is one of the ones that hasn't gone yet. Uh, the, the guy in the back. Is so, like, if we had more than the enemy, like, yeah, you, there's one so, enemy. So right now it's... Uh, PC, NPC, PC, NPC. If there was two more NPCs, uh, basically it'd be like NPC, NPC. So any extra yeah. NPC is tacked on to the end of the initiative. Let's say it was like us three versus one. Would it be like... No. You don't get extra initiative. Fuck. <laughs> um... Actually, you might. I don't know. Further, further rule assessment would have to be required on that. But for now, uh, one's going to swing uh, again at Pat because he's in the front. Pat, look out! Pat, no! Why is everyone keep attacking me? What's your defense? 13. This one misses. Oh, sick. So he goes, he goes to swing, and he swings wide. And uh, you're able to just quickly bring the blade up to catch the axe in like, that little half part that, mm -hmm. there. And you uh, pretty much parry that with remarkable swordsman skip, swordsman uh, ship skill. So holy shit! <laughs> truly, holy shit! <laughs> holy shit! I just hit a clip. Uh, and we're gonna say like this uh, encounter has kind of moved you further into the room. So with that parry, okay. I would say you're, you slice up a little bit further into the room, so you can spread out a little bit. Okay. Uh, it's now your guys' turn. I believe Eric is the last one left. Yes, yes, my turn. So I immediately am sitting here watching these two pull off. Like, Pat's sitting here sword fighting. Jim Bob's, at least I think that's Jim Bob, <laughs> is sitting here slinging arrows like a mad lad. And I'm sitting here like, oh, come on. I got to have something, too. And I'm searching myself. I'm yeah. searching. And I finally feel something kind of attached to my back. Uh -huh. And I pull it off. And I'm like, oh, please let this be something useful. And it's a stick <laughs> with a crystal on the end. And I'm like, what is this supposed to... Wait, there's no way. And I, I stand there with it and I'm like, if this is what I think it is, this is about to be awesome. And I go ahead and I spend... Oh, goodness. Uh, as I'm sitting there trying to, to figure out like a chant or something, I'm like, there's got to be some something I can do to activate this. Uh, Jim, I'm looking for Antipas if that's what we're looking for here. Yeah. 
that you have it right Everyone there. Everyone be be uh, be patient with us as we're learning the game. Please. Uh, spells are on page <laughs> Eric just yells at Ligma. We're, really pro low. we're, pro yeah. we're probably okay, breaking okay. all kinds of rules, but, you like know, whatever. Spells, maybe. Yes. 192. 192. Uh, 192. Oh, my goodness. One ninety four of the yeah, you got it. Okay, I'm gonna sit there and I'm going to spend. I'm going to spend how many mind points? Right? Oh, I have plenty. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna spend thirty of my sixty five mind points. Jeez. Jesus, thirty. Thirty. Okay. Because one for each is ten for each target. Okay. Up to three targets. As me trying to figure out, as I'm sitting here trying to focus and trying to figure out how to get this thing to work. My staff starts glowing a little bit. I'm like, okay, hold up, that whatever this is is working. I sit there and I focus more. I'm gripping the staff. I got that. I got that grip, bro. Game, gamer grip. I'm sitting there like this. I got the fucking grip, the, dude. The fucking cannon. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like shaking, and I'm like, okay, come on, come on. <laughs> and I somehow cast Umbra. Okay. Which is instantaneous. Uh, a storm of dark energy turns into. Turns matter into ash. Each target hit by this spell suffers HR high roll plus 15 dark damage. Okay. I guess I have to roll for that, which is... What's my magic check again? It I should forget. tell you yeah, what, I have it somewhere. What, what the accuracy is. Oh, there it is. Yeah. It is d d d insight and willpower, which I have a D10 in both. Uh, can I borrow someone else's D10? Thank you. The I magic boy. Ah! That a twelve. You beat it. Nice. So they all get blasted for. Let me go ahead and. What was the high roll? My high roll. Yeah, the highest roll of the two. So the ten plus oh. fifteen. So it's oh, twenty-five fuck. dark damage to each one. <laughs> Holy shit! I see. <laughs> okay. So how much you said? Twenty-five. Twenty-five to each. Eric, what the hell did you just do? Dude, I do not know, man. I... I... Whatever it was, it was sick, though, wasn't it? Two, two of them uh, immediately get hit by this dark energy that seems to suck the life completely out of them, and they wither in front of you and turn to ash. Holy the two, shit. All that remains are the two arrows that Jim Bob left in them. You, f you fucking killed them. Oh, yeah, was, I mean, they were trying to kill us, dude. What, what, what else you want me to do? That's true, it's true. So, one of those was the one that you were with, Pat. So, okay. you're you're holding its axe with your sword in the pair. It's just like, it slides down to the yeah. hill of the blade. And the other one is just like... Like, it's it's in shock. It's it's shook, basically. Um, and it, you see it looking at the uh, the doorway... I think he's going to try and run. Jesus Christ. What do we do? <laughs> so, i also like to point out that when you saw uh, Eric casting the spell, uh, he was speaking in another language. Uh, some type of incantation. Meanwhile, I was sitting here like, how the fuck do I get this thing to work? I mean, you thought it was in English. Yeah. For a minute, you guys did hear Eric speak in another language. Even though he didn't mean to. Look, I don't know what you just did, but you just spoke in wingdings and killed three, uh, two goblins. Or goblins. And now, we, and now we cut to the, the last goblin who was going to run at the door. It is his turn. Yep, so he looks to the two, the three of you, uh, drops his axe, st runs to the, the, uh, the wooden main door, which is like a double door, throws it open, and just starts screaming. Like, I mean, like an alarm almost running out into this wintry uh, expanse you see. Uh, is it our turn? Uh, it is not your turn. So who's going first this it's time me. around? Jim Bob's going first. Can I get my D10? Oh, yeah, my bad. There you go. Um, I'll just try to blast this guy in the back. No witnesses. Jesus. <laughs> Ruthless. That is a 12. That is a 12 to hit. Uh, 13 to hit, sorry. Uh, it hits. Uh, and that comes out to 18 damage. Because my high roll was a 10. 
This one hasn't been hit yet, so it takes it in the back and keeps going. Well, it should have been hit. It hit, hit, got hit by Eric's thing, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah, he dies. <laughs> I forgot I forgot you targeted three. Yep. So, uh, his withered goblin body uh, finally gives out, and it almost like the arrow was the final bit, just pff, turns the ash around it and collapse, and then that's all that's left. Bro. So, uh... I go up to the door and I close it. <laughs> <clears throat> so you close the main door and you look around this room. You look around the room. Two mm -hmm. piles of ash, formerly known as goblins. <clears throat> okay. Some type of small fire. Three sleeping bags. Well, sleeping mats. Like, hastily made out of twigs and whatever they could find. Uh, nothing else in the room. No furnishings. Just a, another long hallway that seems to go into a further section of this ground floor. And there is torchlight down there. I'm going to start patting myself down. Like... Because I don't feel like I even knew I had a bow. No. I just took it out. Mm -hmm. um, I started patting myself Everything down. you guys did during combat wasn't almost intentional. It was like a instinct kicking in. That you clearly didn't have before. <laughs> Alright guys, we need, we need to figure this out. What the hell just happened? You're asking a really good question here. Um, um, Pat says... Why are, we, why are we dressed dark. in fantasy armor? Eric just shot... A a fucking blast at, gob at goblins turned them into fucking dust and Jim Bob ruthlessly killed one as it ran away well yeah Jim Bob are you a cold blood killer? it just it just felt right like yeah he's a cold blood there's something killer. you want to tell us Jim Bob? besides you being a fucking orc I, I looked down on my hands uh you think back to the image you saw the blood on the hands of the work and then in the picture uh i don't know i i uh, i like pull out i have like a few shurikens on me and i'm like am i a am i like a ranger or a ninja or what here <laughs> like that's a good question i mean your parent whatever you are i'm over here some sort of mage i guess i'm like waving my stick around uh, and I'm, I start looking at your stick, and I'm like, "You j really just casted magic." I, I mean, yeah, I guess I did. Uh, I, I'm still trying to figure out how I did it. To be honest with you, as I'm sitting here still waving it around, like reckless abandon. As you're waving it around, you do get a little bit of sparks that come out. Like, <laughs> ah! Boy, put that thing away, Eric, please. Okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. I kind of just like. I, I lower it. I'm still holding on to it with mm. one of my hands, but, like, at my side now. It's just lowered. As you guys are standing there, you hear, you hear it further down. Some type of low, guttural chanting from further in. I hope I pick a good song. <laughs> So, like, what you're telling me is there's still further down in this building that we can go? And then you hear what sounds like drums. And you hear, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, like, absolute chanting coming from further in. Uh, well, it seems like we interrupted a party. I mean, to be fair, we must have had some kind of crazy party ourselves, so... And that goblin and and did the shout and the shouting is getting closer and closer, like it's, and you see torchlight on the wall, spreading. Is there anywhere to hide? No. Come there, back upstairs. There, there's the door. We could leave. Well, the goblin ran out and yelled, and so we don't know. But the what the chanting's coming from the other hallway. Yeah, like the so you guys are standing by the front door, where there seems to be like what used to be like maybe like a, uh, this is like a I don't know what to call it. Like the entryway the to foyer. yeah the foyer to this tower that you were that you were in, 
So this would be like the main landing. And then you see even further down, there is like a hallway that kind of turns off. So like, assuming that there is a another attachment to this building that you have yet to explore. Okay. Um, I say we leave. I think yes, because these guys are coming upon us. I, yeah, yeah. I look down my hands. I feel like we're, I could do this, but I don't think I point to myself. I can do this. I think I kind of agree. I'd like to maybe figure out more about our situation before we actually get into another scrap. I agree. And so. I will say, that was in self-defense. Maybe not the third guy, but... As you say, as you open the door, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, then you, and you look out into this wintry expanse. So just from the light, you can see that this is like a courtyard area, and you do see like a ruin, like ruins that surround this exit way. Um... But it is snowing, uh, I'd say mildly, and there is snow on the ground. Uh, visibility, I'd say, is decent. Um, um, but yeah. Uh, let's just. Does it? So we're in like ruins. Well, yeah, we're, yeah. So the ex the doorway, the exit leads to what you would assume to be like a, the courtyard okay, area. Okay. Does it look like some big entranceway where you can just leave this um, like area? Uh, you step so you step out into the courtyard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you do see like I mean, if you went to the far edge, you would probably find like a way out of the courtyard area because it just seems to lead into more ruined structure, like just pillars and miscellaneous pine trees. But you step out, all of you step out, and you're looking for a way out, and you look up to the sky, and you notice um, two things of note, or well, three. There's two moons, and there is this strange, translucent energy flowing through the sky. Hey, yo, gamer, Almost check like it out. Almost like you're, I don't, I don't want to pronounce it, what's it called when, like, way up north, the uh, Borealis? Aurora boy. Yeah, Aurora boy. Yeah. <laughs> I said it right, I think, and then Jim Bob came with the Borea. <laughs> boy. Yeah, yeah but uh, the Borealis is uh, some, some, something in, in regards to that is floating above you. Okay. So I immediately point the sky at the two moons. I'm like, hey, yo, boys, check it out. New moon just dropped. <laughs> moon two. We're in fucking Canada new, with the Aurora. New moon, who does? Well, I've had to say, honestly, with, with the. Uh, the weather out here, it might be in Alaska. Ooh. Last I don't think any of us could have gotten out of Either the way, the last we time are, I checked... There are goblins, though. <laughs> I don't know if we're in Alaska. When was the last time you saw two moons in the sky? You ever been to Alaska, Pat? I haven't. Well, then maybe we're in Alaska. As you guys are saying that, you do see from, from the open door back into the tower, tower slash other building, larger building, um... Two goblins around the corner, and like they are running so quick, they they can't hit the brakes fast enough and kind of slam into each other on the wall, and then they point, and then and they start charging out the door. Well, let's and, start and, running. Uh, before I start running after Jim Bob, I slam the door behind us, and I'm like, we gotta go. So you run off into the. I agree. We should, we're running. Okay, so uh, you take off running into these ruins and as you're running off into them um, your body just kind of feels sluggish um, especially you Eric you kind of feel very like you took a lot out of you first all time right. spellcaster and all yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so you're you don't make as much ground as you would have hoped before they actually get out of the, the building uh, so they are actively on your tail um, but you reach the end of this courtyard that goes into a more of a forest kind of environment, mm -hmm. like pine trees spread up, spread apart just enough. Um, yeah, like into this tree line, basically. So it looks like this was some type of maybe watchtower in the in the middle of a forest, basically. Okay. Uh, the goblins are on your tail as you're running to, the, to these woods. Um. Um. 
Should we? Should I would we... like you guys to make a check. Oh, okay. What kind of check are we making? We're gonna do something involving dexterity. Oh shit. Okay. It's gonna be me. Uh, it's gonna be an individual. Wow. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> so, ba- so basically, just roll a just roll a dex. Well, a dex and a. Just roll a dex and a dex. So two dex. Big gaming. I got a nine. I got a. Doubles. Uh, I got an eighteen crit. Okay. My uh, my rolls are shitty today. I got a seven. So Pat, you fail. Damn. Um, Pat kind of in this new armored form, he kind of trips up on himself a little bit with these spiked shoes. <laughs> they kind of, they kind of, he puts a little bit too much stank on his step, and he just kind of gets it stuck in the ground, and trips up and rolls. Uh, I got these hearey hearey. Yeah, you got on. the got the hearey yeah. hearies on. Damn, Pat, your leg be too stanky. Sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the goblins catches up to you. Shit. And he's gonna get a uh, swing on you. As you're trying to hurry to get up out uh, of the snow. But don't worry about it. He fucking misses completely. Right, so he goes cool, to cool. swing wildly on you, and you kind of do like a eye frame roll. Yeah. Do the I know I do the fat roll from Dark Souls. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you, yeah. And then uh, you. You stay in like this like blade ready position out to your side, uh, super edgy pose in the snow. But then as you do it, an arrow whoosh, lands in the dead set in between the uh, goblin's eyes. And then you immediately instinctually look back to see if it was Orc, orc Bob. <laughs> and he does not have his bow drawn. Or even like he like just looked back and they're, like you're like, wait a minute, who, who shot that arrow? And then before you can even comprehend, you see... Whoosh, 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 Two more, and the like, goblin, and it just falls on the ground. <laughs> no, thank you. I'm gonna keep coming. <laughs> so you get up and keep running. Yeah. Okay. So you're. Uh, meanwhile, while that is happening, you two. Uh huh. Did you stop to look back when Pat fell? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you saw that happen, and you're like, "Come on, hurry!" And you're, you're trying to get him to hurry up to run to you, uh, and you turn around to run, and uh, you see just like um. Like, about, about 15 feet in front of you guys, peeking out between trees, you see cloaked individuals. Kind of, they, they come out, like, in cover, and they fire bows, and they go back behind the tree. And you're like, so you look back again, and you see that there's more goblins chasing you. There's, like, at least a dozen. <laughs> I see them pull their bows and start to, like, quote-unquote, fire at us. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> And then they, they, they just go sh- whizzing past yeah. you. They're, they're not waiting for us. I turn, see them hitting goblins, and I'm like... Come on, Pat, get the fuck up! I'm oh. tired. <laughs> so Pat get these ca- fucking boots on. <laughs> so Pat catches up. Uh, and you guys do you continue to run towards the uh rangers that are firing? Uh I'm not running towards them. Do we take a right? So you, you take a hard right, you plant your feet, and you angle and you and you run yep. for, for, uh, into the uh more into the woods. You can hear back the whizzing of arrows. Uh, the goblins seem to uh have lost interest in you. Good. Uh, and they're chanting and yelling and dying as the arm is the uh, at least you saw at least two people peeking out. Do we hear any screams from something that doesn't sound like a goblin? No. Okay. Silent. Nice. Uh, but as you guys run for a little bit while longer, you uh, eventually, as you're running, like a figure steps out in front of you. Hello? Who? Who? Ah. Uh. That would have been good earlier. (laughs) (laughs) Just flicking through songs. (laughs) Uh, We'll see. We'll see how this goes. It's called Tomb Guardian, so it might get pretty wild, but I guess we'll see. Okay, cool. Shout out Michael Gelfie or whatever his name is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but uh, so this figure steps out around the, the trees and just kind of stops you dead in your tracks. 
you see a gray cloak, um, fur on the collar, uh, strong, sturdy leather underneath, um, two swords on his hip, and a bow strung around his back. Uh, and just underneath the hood, all you can see is this big beard. Okay. And he's like, friend or foe. Uh, friend? And I, I, I make the, the face. <laughs> the, 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 the Please? Mm. The, the, the inquisitive, like, yeah. But what if? <laughs> yeah, so he looks, he looks like all three of you up and down. And then you see two other rangers come up, like, join next to him. Uh, with their bows out, like, just kind of resting with an arrow knocked. Okay. And then they whisper something to him. And he kind of, like, looks past you guys. And you look behind you, and all the goblins that were chasing you are running away or dead. Nice. So the nice. other the other rangers on the other side of there dealt with them. And he's like, So you're not goblins, clearly. However, anything that leaves the Ancient's Tower is usually never good news. You know what? Honestly, I... Especially an orc. What is that supposed to mean? And a human with red eyes? My eyes are red? Hey, yo, your eyes are red, Pat. Why didn't know the helmet is earlier? What color are my eyes? They're blue. Oh. Uh. <laughs> blue. <laughs> <laughs> Jamal was staring at me <laughs> hard. Wait a second. I'm an elf? I gotta. Hey, like, check your ears. Grab my, I gotta grab my ears and, like, oh my god. Yeah. It's like a dream come true. Yeah. So he's just staring at. He's just staring at the three of you. Strange. Does he look like a human? You, uh, we'll is say he takes his hood off, okay. and he is a uh, older human male with kind of like gray, graying hairs. And he's just like, does he have tattoos? No, no tattoos. Okay, as you can see. And he's just staring at the three of you, and, he, and he's just like, so. If you're not, you're clearly not from here. I don't even know where here is. Uh, where correct. is here? Uh, I told you guys we're in Alaska. Yes, you're correct. We're not from Alaska. Are we? Um, are we in Alaska, sir? We're from uh, a state on the east coast. Um, this is this is the Crystal Forest. The huh? Who? Oh, on Avalon. I've not heard of that uh, re nature retreat. He like he like he st like the two other people start whispering. He's like, "Well, so you're not from here. You're not goblins. You're definitely not normal." Well, hold on. Around these parts. Okay. I'll tell you what. Follow us back to Kirkwall. And, uh... It's the least, we, it's the least I could do for hel helping take out some of these goblins that were inside there. Uh, it honestly sounds better than wherever here is at the moment, so... Lead on, sir. Yeah, get out of the cold, you know. And as he's turning around, he's like talking, he's like, Man, you see so much weird shit during the solstice. People just start acting crazy. And the other one's like, they just start idly chit-chatting. And he's like, stay close. There could be more. The howlers get especially dangerous during this time of the year. I stay close. And about like a few minutes later, I'm like, what's a howler? To him? Yeah. Well, if you're not from Avalon, I don't really expect you to know. Howlers are just great wolves, basically. I see. I stick closer. <laughs> <laughs> so, where are you guys from again? It's we are. It's pretty strange just to walk out of the tower and. 
Well, I've never heard of Avalon, so I couldn't really. I don't, I don't know. Do you know the United States? Oh, America. <laughs> I've never heard of such a place. Hmm. That's never a good sign. Have you heard of a planet called Earth? Are we on Earth? We are on the planet. Yeah, what but you... what is the planet called? The planet? What do you call those two balls in the sky? The moons. Plural. Plural. Uh, do they have the name each, or are they just moons? Just moons. Okay. Is one bigger than the other? Um, no. Okay. Gamers, we're not on Earth. What is this Earth you keep speaking of? It's where we're from. Where we're from, there's just humans. No, you're from Dagda. If I had to assume. Hey, yeah, Jim Bob, is that, is that some sort of... Is that a Ligma joke? Uh, it sounds kind of like it. I was about to say that, or it's some sort of... Uh... Dag D's Wait, how, how do you know... <laughs> how do you know he's from Dagda? Well... Just because of the proximity that we have towards the other kingdom, I would figure... It's so rare to see just an orc walking around these parts. And they're normally really inclusive, so... Where's he from, and I point to Eric? I mean, are you pulling my leg? No, no. I, I'm, no, I genuinely don't know. We have no idea where we are right now. Where we're from? All we know is that we're in some place called Avalon. Where we're from, orcs, goblins, and elves are fantasy. Yes. Make believe. He just kind of pinches. He just pinches his brow, and he's like, "I never thought I'd see the day." The mana craze strikes again. The who? The what? You guys have been hitting it a little bit too hard, huh? Hitting what, sir? Been smoking them magic rocks? How do you smoke? Oh, well, I can see it. All uh, right, all right. I enough, enough questions. Save it, save it, save it for the elder and Kirk Wall. The elder? So you didn't answer the question. Where, where's this elf boy? I from? have no more interest in entertaining oh, these please. questions from these clearly. Under the influence, people. Well, I can't say I'm not under the influence, but I mean, who knows? Honestly, see, seeing magic happen, I might be on some acid or something. Like, let's be real. I mean, be fair. We've seen little green men running around trying to kill us. Speak of which, Pat, are you okay? Yeah, why? Didn't you get hit by one of them? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel fine. He, he stabbed you pretty good. He did. It, it hurt a little bit, but I mean, I'm fine. I will say, ever since I woke up, though, I've been on this. I've always, I've been constantly on the edge of being very angry. Really? Yes. I don't know what's going on. I just feel on edge for no reason. Ever so since I woke up, I feel dangerous. The, the lead, the lead ranger is like, I know the feeling. <laughs> I feel troubled. Troubled enough to fucking kill a a, a, run, a running away goblin. Well, it looks like goblins are evil esque around here. Are are goblins always evil? These goblins are these goblins are very evil. These goblins. So there are good goblins. I've never seen them, but I've heard stories. Huh. Okay. okay. All right. Take us to your leader, or whatever the hell I'm supposed to say in this situation. <laughs> he's taking us there. He said we're he's taking currently. Us there. Yeah, we're. Okay. <laughs> Guys, I think What's we should name? stop talking and just keep. My name going. is Vernon. 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 I would give you my last name, but I don't trust you with it. Understandable. I don't even know my name. That doesn't, you know your name. That doesn't yeah, surprise on, me. My name is... Well, Pat? where I was originally from, it's Patrick. But I don't know who I am now. Oh, we're, re we're we, reinventing ourselves? Are we... Are we? I, I got know. this. I'll set the stage. My oh, name God. is Jimothy Bobbert. Jim Bob, that's, that's not clever. I, I, it's clever to me. I'm not calling you that. You can keep calling me Jim Bob. It still works. He's right. Damn it. It's just Jim Bob is just an abbreviation at that Get point. So, <laughs> so Jimothy <laughs> Robert. Strange. And one they refer to as Pat. For now, I guess. No, you, you got to pick a name now. I'd rather. I look edgy. I don't want to just be named Pat. You got to pick a name now. I don't know. So that. And what about you? 
Uh, you should go as Vernon. Uh, yeah, name yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm I can leave around. you here in the in the in these Not woods. Joking, yeah, please. I, I look and, around and make sure you have the worst trip of your life. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm looking around. All I see is snow. Uh, winter. I like it. Um. Yeah, my winter full stop like share, or he doesn't. He's not giving us his last name. I'm, I'm not giving him mine. Oh, that's oh, fuck. Probably because you can't. Probably because you can't remember it. Uh, I can remember it, sir. But I'm not gonna fall for your tricks. He remembers my last. He, he knows my last name though. Fuck. And this, he just gives like. Knows? You've never thought you could hear such a deep sigh escape from him before. <laughs> There's like almost like there's just disappointment. We're literally making up aliases in front of yeah, him. Yeah. <laughs> and you're talking about how you don't know where you're from. You're saying all this crazy <laughs> shit. And he's just like Alright. When we get back to the village, I'm gonna need to confiscate whatever that drug you guys were on is. I don't want to get around the village. Listen, you can test our piss. I'm not on anything. Why? He what? Just, he just keeps walking. <laughs> he just keeps walking. <laughs> so, as you guys are walking. Yeah. Um, so, like I said earlier, this uh, this is the Crystal Forest. This is just a almost pine tree. It's just ma mainly pine uh, forest. And the snow in this area, now that you're actually like not running for your lives, is... Sure, sure uh, shines like grounded up uh, jewels. So you can probably uh, assume that's where it gets its name from. Okay. Um, and yeah, so you're just walking through the woods. Uh, there's no path. Uh, eventually, you do get joined by the other two rangers that were there. So totaling five altogether. Uh, there seems to be just a uh, emblem on all their cloaks, and it's just a um, just a, just a wolf. Um, like a wolf's head. Um, so eventually after about like two hours of walking, you do breach the tree line. And you start to see, um, underneath a little bit like snow capped roof, basically. And you see kind of like a small village, like a little hamlet, uh, appearing on the horizon. Um... Yeah, so you're you can't really make out any details yet, but you do see you come up from the village and you see some lights and smoke trails up into the into the air. Uh Vernon is in the front and he um looks back to you. Now until we get to the elder, be on your best behavior. It's very rare that we get three of your type. Adventurers are common, goons? but... Goons is exactly the word I would describe. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's fair. It. <laughs> That's fair. I'll try my best, sir. Of course. I feel like as those hours went on, we were just like, uh, brainstorming Pat's name still. We were just workshopping. What did you it. end up with, Pat? Alright. So I'm not going to pick a name like Jimothy Bobbert. So I, I just need to have some dignity. Go for it. I'm gonna go by a simple name. Arthur. Last name Morgan? No. Just Arthur for now. Until I find out what my last name is. At least I have a last name, you two. Fuck you. I'd rather be I'd rather have no last name than be, my last name be Bobbert. That's 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 your fault. Also, you gave the stranger your last name when he wouldn't give you his. No, I did such We're, a. There's apparently magic a wherever we are. What if he curses you? Damn. Oh, fuck. My last name's not Bobber anymore. I cannot do curses. Yeah, he's a ranger. Come on. Wait, so? no. Did, yeah, he did have a boat. Yeah, he's a ranger. So? I look down at myself. I don't have a magical focus. Maybe the magical focus was inside you the whole time. So uh, after this little bit of a conversation, another half hour goes by or so, and you're getting closer, closer to the town. Um, 
the architecture of the buildings is kind of reminiscent of like what you would see like in a, like a Viking village. But the layout of the village reminds me of like a western, old wild west town. It seems to be some mixing of the two almost. Uh, however, the roads do look treaded on. Uh, the It seems these people, this isn't the first snow they've wintered basically. Yeah, like the roads, roads plowed at the moment. Uh, as plot as they could be for, you know, what it is. Um, they seem to know how to handle the snow and all that. So, uh, And as you're approaching, you're kind of approaching, like, the main building. So... I do have a question. Yeah. With this being a western-esque town... Western slash Viking, yes. Do they have spurs? No spurs. Fuck. No spurs. Viking, uh, Vikings with just spurs. The, the, <laughs> the, the largest building you can see is in the center. It's this great lodge, basically. Um, and that seems to be where Vernon and the other rangers are taking you. Uh, there is no one out on the street, probably because it's like you know the, the middle of the night. So it's fair. Um, the couple people that are out just kind of give you like a weird look, and they they look to be real. They, they, they're human. I as give far a as weird you look tell. back. Okay. They give it to you back. Ugly mugging them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you're walking through this village. And then you get to the main lodge, which is a great building. There's like braziers like lit on the outside. Vernon uh, sends the other two other uh, four guards away. And then uh, he just kind of stands at the door, turns to the uh, the three of you. Let me get this straight. You are Winter. Yes. And you are Jimothy. You Bobber. can call me Jim Bob. You are Jim Bob. And you are Arthur. Sure. Okay. Before we go in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you once. Hand over whatever shit you're on. We're not on anything. Sir, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I don't know what you're referring to. I, I I, don't think I have anything on me. Listen, you can give me a cavity search if you want, but you're not going to find any of this rocks or whatever you're talking about. Okay, I wasn't going to offer that. That's I'm offering. We all woke up in a very dark room. Not and that we have no idea where we were. At the we top were. of whatever tower that was. The top of this tower and these ruins. You, Look, were, at, you were at the top of the ancient tower? Uh, I, I, I guess so. Yeah. I assume so. We, well, we walked down like three or four flights of stairs, right, it, guys? It feels like yeah. we spawned there. All I'm going to say is I, I don't know where, where we were before this. Maybe the goblins captured us at some point. I, I don't know, man. You mentioned something we about bound, a mon. Though. You mentioned You're right, we weren't a, bound. Uh, a monocraze. Yeah. What is is, it, is that is the that, crystals you're talking that? about? The elder will explain everything. Hmm. Hopefully, I don't know what. This is a pretty serious case of monocraze, so. Sure. And he opens the. Uh, he opens the door, and then there's like two guards in there. And he nods, and there's like this great wooden, heart, like hearth in the middle. Almost like reminiscent of like what you would see like a Jarl's house in Skyrim. Okay. And uh, he sends one of the guards further back into the thing. And there's like a, not really like a throne, but like a central seating area. And he shows you to it. Um, just nice, nice little furnishings in here. It's warm. And he's like, I'll be taking your weapons. I mean, you know what? Honestly, fair enough. I, 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 I'm afraid what will happen with this thing. He takes your... I hand it over. Yep. He takes that, and he takes... I hand over my bow and arrows and shuriken. I hand him over my sword, I guess. Thank you for being so cooperative for once. Yes, sir. And he hands, him, he hands him to somebody else. The elder will be with us shortly. So, 
I, I like whispered to these two. So like, are we just sticking to the story of the truth of just we don't know? I mean, yeah, there's nothing we can really make up. But I wouldn't even know what to make up right now, dude. We've been we've been through a day already. We also just walked who knows how many miles to get here, dude. Let's, let's just... I'm too tired to lie at this point. Let's just get yeah, with the flow. I feel like it would just only be bring more trouble. Yeah. Yeah. So you wait a couple more minutes, and then you hear, like, what sounds like a cane, and kind of hobbling out is this old little granny. And she has these thick robes on, and she kind of walks up, and she just starts looking at all three of you. She says, like, smacking her lips together. Right. And she sits down at the uh, bigger chair at the table. She pulls out this long pipe. She starts to... She lights it. So, Vernon. These are the three... That you found in the ancient tower? He's like, yes. He didn't tell me one of them was Sky Australian. She looking. <laughs> she's looking at you, Eric. Sky who? Uh, I I mean, look up between the other two. I'm like, okay, which one of us is Sky Australian? I can't tell. Uh, I don't know. Like, is that like a different region of Australia? I didn't know there were regions. I look back to the elder. And then an orc. It's very strange in these parts. Yeah, I'm from Dagger, remember? I'm not Sky Australian, so it has to be one of you two. And then a man with red yeah. eyes. Very uncommon. Maybe, oh, maybe so I'm, I'm, I'm the Sky Australian. Maybe, yeah. Hmm. Well. This is quite the interesting trio. I'd say so. So, tell me from the top. You wake up in Ancient's Tower, one of the most deadly ruins in the region. Yes. Oh. Okay. And you sure. just stroll out. Well, we walk down like three or four flights of stairs. We Multiple empty wa- dark rooms. Went walked into a room, found th- uh, three goblins. They, they attacked shot, us first. They attacked us first. We retaliated. Uh, I shot some sick, wicked dark beams. Two turned to dust. One got shot in the back. One ran away. Yep, and and got killed. Then we went out because there we heard people coming. Some weird, spooky, chanty shit. Some voodoo. Two other goblins showed up, started chasing us. We got shot with arrows, and we ran into uh, Vernon here. No, 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 no. The goblins got shot by arrows. Oh, yeah, the goblins got shot by arrows. And then Vernon found us. Yes. That's, That's our story. That's happened. So you just awoke at the top of the Ancient's Tower. Yes. 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 Does that not happen? <laughs> I laughed at myself. <laughs> Vernon speaks up. Any of my men you've entered the tower have died. I mean, look, I, I get it. There, there were a lot of goblins, but the ones we fought didn't seem like they were that crazy. I mean, we barely knew what we were doing, and we took them out. Our, our friend here only got hit once. And the Elder speaks. I'm not surprised that a mage from Sky Australia was able to deal with three goblins. Okay, so that definitely or an orc from, the from Australian. Dagda, I hear. And this man you travel with is well armored. In fact, Can't... I've never seen armor that looks like this before. Yeah, me neither. These boots are terrible. They weren't made for walking. <laughs> they boot, yeah, we're not and made That's for what walking. they won't do. <laughs> so. Vernon tells me he believes you have a bad case of mana, well, mana craze. What is that? Yeah, can you please explain whatever that is? He's been saying it over and over again. I have mana no craze is something that happens during the solstice where 
is when you when you're at an influx of uh, magical energy. Us? No, it's if you if you come into contact with something that has a larger amount of mana uh, or spirit energy, it can put you under like a hysteria. Oh, so like so like almost like a drug or effect affliction. Oh, she thinks we're tripping. I mean, it feels like it. I mean, to be fair, I, if we're talking about a large amount of magical energy, whatever I fired off turned two goblins into dust. I'm sure they're tripping. And you remember nothing before this? Uh, mm, not nope. really. No, I, I, I know these two are like my best buds in the whole world, but outside of that, I, I couldn't tell you. I know I have more friends. The last thing I remember seeing. I'm sure you do. <laughs> the last thing I remember seeing before I woke, before I appeared in this dark room, I saw a stained glass window with someone who apparently has my likeness. I also saw this. I looked down and I saw this, and I gestured at myself before crashing through some stained glass window. Uh, same, but this. And I just kind of, like, pull a little bit at my ears. Interesting. Well. And before she can speak, uh, you hear, like, someone running. Like, sprinting down one of the halls to the main chamber. Do my elf ears twitch when I hear it? Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> and, and then, bursting out is this, uh, younger human woman, uh, in these sleep, in these, like, sleeping gowns. And she's like, which one of you can do magic? Him. Oh. I me? immediately point to Eric. I, I guess me. She points to you. You're going to have to teach me. Teach you? I, I mean, I barely know how I did it. I don't believe you, elf. I guess I am an elf. Magic is innate to your people. Okay, this is starting second, to make sense. Second nature. That would make sense of how you knew how to do it without knowing how to do it. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Well, who are you? Who just are, come in here demanding stuff. Who am I? And yes. She, and, and she kind of like crosses her arms and puffs up, and the uh, uh, you see like the elder kind of like she she kind of like sighs and face palms, and then Vernon shrugs. She's like, "My name's Angelica, Angelica Ravenoff." Is that supposed to mean something? Yes. Okay, what? It means you have to do what I say. And then the, the elder's like, No, Angelica, how many times did I tell you being a part of the elder's family does not mean you are able to boss everybody around. So are you her mother? No, she's my granddaughter. Okay. Oh, you look really young for your age. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> okay, that one broke that one broke me a little bit. <laughs> She's like, start, oh, I just gonna start she's like, talking. she's like, she's like, the flattery of orcs is well known. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, oh, don't listen to my grandmother. You have to do what I say. But once again, why? I feel like I should listen to the, well, I feel like we, I don't want to speak for you. I uh, should listen to the elder, not the elder's granddaughter. Hot take. She kind of, like, looks away. And then, um, entering from behind her is this groggy-looking older man. Not really old, like mid middle-aged. He's just like, oh, Angelica, how many times did I tell you not to yell? And he's all, and he's, like, very clearly, like, just waking up. And he's like, Mother, what is... And he sees the three of you. Oh. Yeah. And then the elder's like, uh, Stein, these are our guests, and I imagine they're going to be staying with us for a little while. Hi there, Mr. Stein. Mr. Stein. My name's Winter. Uh, this is... Jimothy. Jimothy. And this is Arthur. We just got here. Right. What do you mean, right? Right. Anyways. How many times have I told you... 
Mother, if you're going to invite guests into the home, at least give us a heads up. And she's like, you'll get over it. <laughs> it was a little short notice, and we're sorry for that. Well, he, uh, Stein looks around. I can probably put three people of your talents to work tomorrow. Work? Yes, I know it's probably an uncommon thing for you in Sky Australia. Look. But us down here on the planet, you know, truly on the planet, have to work for what we get. What? what and then, buy? and before you can even say anything, the, the daughter cuts in, Angelica, and she's like, that's why I need to learn magic, Dad, so I can, like, totally help out. And he's like, how many times have I told you? Magic is magic is only good is as good as the hard work that you also put forth. She's like, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> I look over to Pat and I'm all like, did I used to put in hard work? Is that why I got magic? I don't think I did. I have no idea. But this Angelica lady is annoying me. Uh, I mean. How old is Angelica Lady? She like? looks to be about your guys' age. Oh, okay. Well, well, you say our age, but do our like? She looks to be about your current ages. She's in our age range. She's probably like mid twenties. Okay, so I'm. A, are, are we assuming elves live a while still? Or no, like she is in her mid twenties. We we don't know how old your elf your elf is. Yeah. Okay, I just look about mid twenties. Yeah, you, everyone looks to be about in their mid twenties. Okay, cool. Except Jim Bob, you can't really tell his age. Yeah. Um, well, he's dashing either way. Yeah. I'm a charmer. It's, um, it's the teeth. <laughs> They're tusks. And, and the elder's like, I'll have Angelica show you to your rooms. Well, it's really only going to be one room, but... That's fair. I'm sure you all could use a great rest and you can sleep off whatever substances you've been indulging in. However doesn't take away from the fact that you were in the Aegis Tower and survived. A feat that many, and I mean many, cannot say. Why is this tower so renowned? Who's the Ancient? The Ancients is what we describe people that lived on Avalon before us. I would not expect an outsider like yourself to know. But at the Forgotten City, the Forgotten City and the Ancient Tower are believed to have been connected at one point, or the Ancient Tower is like an outpost of the people that came before, the Ancients. Um, so yeah, it's just one of many of their ruins that they've left behind in Avalon. Uh, very dangerous, monster infested. Recently, the Ancient Tower has been overcome by an orc, a, a goblin band. Uh, so that's why Vernon was there. He's been taking shifts, patrolling with his uh, Grey Guard. So it was dangerous before the goblins? Yes. So, okay, so that explains why the goblins weren't that big of a deal. Okay. There are more relatively newer threats. And it's quite suspicious that they haven't been taken out by whatever dwelled there before. Maybe whatever dwelled there before decided it was time to move on. Maybe whatever was there before made those goblins go crazy. Because from what I've heard from Vernon here, not all goblins are bad. Allegedly. Allegedly. I hear the ones in Dagda are quite pleasant. Is that, is that true? That? I don't know. Right. Well, anyways, uh, it's past my bedtime. I feel that right now. Angelica, show these gentlemen to the guest room. And uh, her father kind of shoots her like a be on your best behavior look. And uh, she is... Um, just to give you a little quick uh, appearance rundown on her, she is she has like a kind of like a pixie cut black hair, um, and she's pale and she has very blue eyes. Um, and she looks relatively more 
like lean, like an athletic build, because uh, obviously she does work in the village. Um, so she has a little bit more of a lean build. And she, uh, she's like, whatever. And then stands by one of the other hallways waiting for you. So before I leave the room, I do have a question for the elder. And I say, in, just in passing, like, so like, other than watching the ancient tower, what else does this village do? Like, do we ex do, do you guys export stuff, or is this just live? A, you just live. You just live, and we don't necessarily watch over the tower. We just have to deal with whatever decides to take up residence. Is it always cold here, or do you guys like it's are winter. able to be? Oh, it is winter. Oh. I'm, I'm winter. I'm just trying to figure it out. Yeah, he's winter. Do you, do you for do you not know how seasons work? Well, I didn't know if this was like some up north place, like Alaska. Like Alaska. Like Alaska. You well, wouldn't be able to grow crops in Alaska. Avalon is at the probably the northernmost part of the world. Or at least one of the northern parts. Okay, cool. Um, any chance maybe tomorrow we can see a map, try to get a bearing on where we're at? Perhaps. Okay. That's good enough for I me. wish you I... good night. And she stands up and she hobbles away and good Stein night. helps her. I salute. An Angelic is by the door. Uh, well, Vernon is also going to... Uh, Vernon's kind of like just hanging back. And then Angelic is by the other hallway and she's like, well... I'm like, okay, okay. And I, I'll, I'll take the lead. And... Okay, so you uh, you take the lead and she walks... Uh, she's like... You follow her down this um, crafted hallway. And... There's a bunch of rooms that lead off to like storerooms, uh, another meeting room, and then eventually uh, there's like a final door on the far left, and she opens it to reveal like a great, a great room, basically a great guest room. And then uh, before you can walk in, uh, she catches your arm and she's like, "But no, seriously, if you do have anything to teach, I'd be greatly appreciative." I kind of like. She, and she she, she kind of like pulls out her hand. She's like, "My magic is more raw." I kind of like look down at where she grabbed my arm. I'm just like, "Oh, um, I mean, if if I can figure it out, maybe. I guess it depends on what they have me doing tomorrow." Right. Cool. Well, I'm not gonna say thank you or anything. And she like walks away. No thanks expected. Yeah, I don't know why she would say that. Like, it's not like you've done anything yet. But... Also, with her kind of type, I don't think there was going to be a thank you either way. Yo, well, this is in our room, by the way. Yeah, yeah, you guys have stepped into the room. Yo, tomorrow, if she's like, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 please, please continue, no. Jimothy. <laughs> Fine, Winter. If she's she starts talking about her power being raw again, just tell her you can give her something raw. Jesus oh Christ. my god! <laughs> oh <laughs> my god! I see. Uh, the on that orcs, note, the orcs in this world are tripping. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, uh, I'd like to take a look around the room. And, okay, um, so I, I immediately turn away from there, Timothy over here. There's only there's like setting. there's like one room. I mean, obviously one room. There's one. There's one bed. There's only one bed. <laughs> there's only one bed. Is it oh big? Oh my! Least? It's big. It's two of you could probably. I mean, the three of you could sleep on <laughs> if you wanted. Um, I'm sleeping there. All right. <laughs> I don't care if two people are sleeping with me or one person or no one, none. But I'm sleeping on that bed. <sighs> there's like a. Uh, there is like a window that's kind of like frosted over that looks out. Okay. To the rest of the village. All right, we all gonna try and cram on this bed. Is there any other furnishings in this room? There is like a recliner. Not, there's like there is like a posh, like the kind of chair Jim Bob games in. Kind of <laughs> like. Actually, you know what? I don't want to sleep in the same bed with Jimothy. Damn. He touched my ass earlier. You know that that that's fair. In the dark. That's fair. But in all seriousness. Mm-hmm. I think you should take her up on the offer, just because... What, of giving her something raw? No. <laughs> of just God. Like, Can we drop that topic? <laughs> of just, like, helping her out with her magic, because uh, the more we get people to trust us, I think the more things will go well for us. And wherever we are. I, if 
if we don't go to sleep and then wake up back in our own room. You know what? Very fair. Uh, we could all just be tripping. Someone could spike the jungle juice. I bet that's what it is. Probably. But either way, yeah, now if, if we wake up and we're still in this weird situation, um, I'll do my best once again, depending on what they decide to have me do tomorrow, apparently. Pat, what do you think about all of this, man? Well, hold on. Arthur. <laughs> well, hey, look, we're, we're in private quarters right now. I, I, judging by what's going on around here, I don't think they have anything that can record us. So I'm going to go ahead and say... When he says that, I start looking around. So I'm going to go ahead and say Pat. I'm going to use our real names around here. I mean, we're already using your real name still. That's fair. So, I mean, at this point, I feel like we're just, like, in question mode. Like, we just need as many answers as possible. Um, so, yeah, I feel like the more people we can get to trust us, the better more answers we'll be able to find. That makes sense. We're on a prank show. Oh? We're on a prank show right now. Did you find a camera? No, but I just have a feeling. <laughs> a prank show? How do we end up on a prank show? Someone spiked the jungle juice, mm -hmm. and they're pr playing a prank on us. They're, they got, like, cameras everywhere. I can't find them, but... Call it. Jim Bob, I prank shows died in, like, the 2010s, dude. I, I could, I'd i rather say we went back in time rather than we went to another world. Jim Bob, I casted magic earlier, dude. We disintegrated little green men. I'm, I'm just trying to get, give us an out, man. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, man. Look, you know what? Let's just sleep. Uh, I go to sleep. <laughs> Jimbo just rolls over. Oh. 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 <laughs> Alright, we'll, we'll assess in the morning. I'm going to jump in their recliner and catch some fat Z's. They still have our weapons and everything, right? Yes. Yes. Gotcha. Or at least everything we handed over. I, I don't know if I have anything else. I never gave them my shield, so I'll be using it as a blanket. They never did that <laughs> cavity search. Um, I guess, assuming there's still more room in the bed, I will go ahead and share a bed with uh, Orc Bob. Orc Bob. Okay. So. Uh, there is, like, a small hearth fireplace that was already lit. Okay. So that way it is warm in there. Nice. Um, you, so, Pat, do you... De everyone de-armors, I'm guessing, right? I'm not wearing armor, am I? Well, yeah, you're wearing, like, leather, like... Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm de-armoring it. Yeah, yeah de-armor. I'll go ahead and take off whatever out... I'm going to keep my cloak on me as, like, okay, a blanket so you So, Eric, you take off the cloak. Um, and you'd see the crest for the first time. The silver crown and silver scepter on the violet field. Okay. Um, you know, maybe that's how this person knew I was Sky Australian. Is this like a national flag or something? Um, and then Pat, while you're taking off the armor, uh, you're noticing as you're taking it off, it's like, um, he puts it down, and you guys can hear like an audible like, Gong! like it's way heavier than it looks. And you definitely feel faster now. You feel more light. You feel like, so just like you know, do the stretches. Yeah, you know, so and roll like, my shoulders, you know, like like, like a like, like you were wearing some Piccolo weighted armor, basically. Yeah, you got that Dragon Ball armor. Yeah. Sheesh, Pat, you been walking around with that all day? I guess so. It didn't even feel heavy. Man. What about you, Jim Bob? Strip, 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 strip. I start stripping. Well, you, yeah, as Jim Bob would, he, uh, he <laughs> takes off as many, as much close as possible, uh, to stay warm, revealing this fucking ripped orc bod, hey, battle scarred, no. uh, and interestingly enough, well, not interesting, kind of dark. There's like hash marks on his wrist. Mm -hmm. There's like 20 of them, like little, like, tallies. Oh. Jamal, are you going through it right now? Apparently. <laughs> well, they're, they're like scarred up, right? Yeah, they're like... Apparently I was going through it. Doesn't look like I'm going through they're it. They're not right like... Now. They're like... They look like intentional tallies. Yeah, but they're not like new. No, there's no there's no new yeah. ones. 
Well, whatever whatever this body is, they were going through it. I was going. I don't know how to refer to it yet. Jimothy was going through it. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys, you guys are bed and shacking up together, right? Yeah. Yeah, I figure why. Right, so you, you shack up. Pat's getting the chair. Yeah, and I'm using like my cloth, like fur yeah, robe fur, thing. Fur as robe. I wear no covers. I'm just exuding heat. Well, then I'm I'm once again I'm covering myself with my cloak because it's familiar at this point. It's the only thing I really have that's like, this has been on me the whole time. I'm gonna use this. It's my comfort blanket right Neither now. Neither of us are using the, the cloak. So as our three heroes kind of trail off into some type of slumber, the camera. A metaphorical camera that has been following them kind of zooms out of the lodge. And zooms out and zooms out. Back over to the ancient castle, or the ancient tower. Mm -hmm. And you see a figure walking along amongst the snow. A, a rather large looking figure. And he's surrounded by goblins. Okay. And he's kind of, he kind of puts his hand to like some of the tracks that are lightly snowed over at this point. The ash pile of the goblin. He kind of rub, he kind of puts his hands to the ash, rubs it, and the camera begins to zoom in. And this is a large figure, larger than any male. I mean, human, human, anything. And, he, and the, as almost like a cinematic shot, he turns around and you see this red goblinoid face and he has these battle marks you are each going to gain a fabulous point as a villain has not been introduced okay first villain first villain arc let's go and then he kind of, he takes the ash and as, as the camera is zooming off from his face and zooming back out you see him marking the heads of the goblins. And their eyes begin to go, like, enraged. Hmm. And he says, To the village, it burns. Tonight. And that's where we're in the first session. Sheesh. I see. I'm sure it would have been longer, but honestly, the setup took a lot longer than we thought it was going to. <laughs> yeah, there, was, there, there, there was a little bit more, but I think it, I think we're, it's a good, good spot to end it. We know for next time. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, okay, so this, this... That was really fun. Yeah, it's been really fun so far. The uh, system's interesting from what we kind of know. I, I'm definitely going to read up more on this before next session. I, I like it. Yeah. I, I'm probably going to take notes of where everything is in the PDF, so if I need their quick reference. Yeah, I've just been taking screenshots of, like, certain parts. Yeah. I'm just sifting mm. through. That's a smart idea, That's yeah. Good. It definitely, I think the next session it would, would, is going to run a little bit smoother rules-wise. Yeah. Um, but to you, the viewer, I feel like it helps to go through the rules every now and then. Yeah. So. So we, we can probably keep explaining what we're doing at the moment. I mean, if anybody yeah. else is interested in playing this like we are, that they can learn with us. For sure. Uh, and just go over the classes uh i am playing a rogue ranger uh i have three classes actually i am playing a wayfarer entropist spiritist uh basically quick explanation for all those because those are kind of weird names uh wayfarer is just kind of like a general adventurer for the most part uh entropist is like i control like dark magic and like time magic and stuff with that and Spiritist is more of like the priest of this where I can heal and do light magic. I am playing a Dark Blade and a Fury. Fury is basically like the more damage I take, the strong like the stronger I get. And then Dark Blade, I just exude edgy energy. The Dark Knight of our group. Pretty much, yep. And I'm playing the role of everyone else. <laughs> 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 so... Anyway, yeah, like I said, make sure you guys gain that fabulous point because the villain's been introduced in the story. Yep, I have it written down. Um, and yeah, so I think that went pretty well, all things considered. Yeah, for, for, for our first session where we 
didn't know a lot of what we were doing. That, that went pretty yeah. well. Yeah, that went really well. That was so fun. I think we're going to be doing this as of now every other week. So not next week, but the week after we'll be back. Um, Shooting for Wednesday releases at yeah, the moment. So, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed listening to it as much as we did playing it. And, um, yeah, till next time. All right, so before you hit that button, uh, I'd like to go ahead and point out, as usual with the podcast, uh, you can catch us uh, on Twitter at Arclight Brigade. You can catch us on our Gmail if you want to send us an email for whatever reason, asking us a question, give us a suggestions, tips, pointers, or anything you'd like to hear from us in the future. About the podcast or Fabula Ultima. Yeah, uh, at you can hit us there, uh, Arclight Brigade at gmail.com. And, I mean, obviously, we're, this is going to be going up on our YouTube and our Spotify, both of which can be found under Arclight Studios, I believe. I think so. Either way, just searching up Arclight Podcast or Arclight Adventures will get you to our stuff here. Yes. And also, once again, shout out to Michael Gelfie, Galfie for the music. Honestly, this has been really dope music to have for this session, so I do appreciate yeah. it. Um, it was really good. Yeah, uh, we will also be linking his stuff in the description yeah. below. So you guys can use that for your tabletop gaming. Tons of tons of uh, music to use. So, yeah. But to wrap it up, stay gaming? Stay, stay gaming. tabletop stay gaming. gaming.